Next Chris Mini. I represented World Cosplay Summit for Team UK in 2018 with my lovely other half, who's currently cosplaying my son. Don't think too hard about that one. Daddy! <laughs> uh, I am a full-time entrepreneur, and cosplay makes up about half of my income. This photo here is the best example I can think of of cosplay fitness, which is essentially using a fictional character to motivate you in real life to achieve things that you otherwise feel like you could not. When this vote was taken, we had 100 Japanese people screaming at us whilst we were representing our country in one of the most prestigious cosplay contests in the world, which is the World Cosplay Summit. Might have repeated myself there, sorry. But it wasn't always this way. Six years ago, I was a smoker a drinker, I did a lot of drugs, and I generally just mess around. I was an absolute knucklehead, I didn't know how to apply myself, and all my tutors know it, knew it, sorry. And I basically just lived life by the skin of my teeth. I was living my life in a mediocre way, and I knew it. I wasn't living up to my own potential. And six years later, I, I would say I have more than I've ever thought I would. Now, if we go back to when we're children, and the characters we tend to idolise as children, we have Batman, Sonic, Captain Scarlet, and Son Goku, who are my personal heroes. Every single one has an athletic pursuit. Batman's nutrition is 100% on point all the time, to the point where he pretends to drink when he's actually drinking ginger ale, to make sure that his mental faculties are always 100%. Sonic the Hedgehog is the fastest thing alive. Captain Scarlet is an indestructible soldier. And Son Goku is the strongest person in the world. These were the people who inspired me as a child and who I was awestruck by. Like, I guess sports fans have athletes, but I've always found that fictional characters are more entertaining than athletes because they do things that aren't even possible. So. <laughs> If that's the inspiration, and the outcome is a Lambrini drinking knucklehead who can't even get into uni on time, where's the connection? Like, what's going on? Why are there so many people who admire these strong, amazing characters who can basically pinch press planets, but you'd rather just get wasted on a weekend and have nothing? And that's where the idea of transformation comes in. This transformation from Dragon Ball Z it occurs when Goku, the character I'm currently cosplaying, has, has no way out and no chance of winning. So he becomes a person who can, just five minutes before that transformation happens, he's about to kick the bucket, that's it, it's game over, and he reaches deep inside himself to become someone who can win and that's what I did for myself. I had one night too many of being who I used to be and with a cigarette in hand on one of the worst hangovers I ever had. I accepted wholeheartedly that that was what was going to kill me. It wasn't going to be any accident, it wasn't going to be old age, it was going to be that you're overweight and you can't stop eating in garbage. You smoke, you're going to get cancer. You drink, I don't really have to say what's wrong with drinking, do I? Or all the ecstasy I was doing on the weekend either, but uh, th those things go without saying. There was one night too many. So I transformed. I became someone who didn't smoke, who didn't eat like garbage, despite the chicken nugget videos you might see me eat on YouTube, but I don't do that all the time. That was within one year. Within an entire year, I managed to change my life. And I see so many people who want to lose weight, who want to get in shape, and they're scared of the time investment, or they yo-yo and flip-flop for years, because they can't commit to transforming. If, just like going back to when I was a, a child and not being able to apply myself, this is what you can accomplish in a year. I believe I lost three stone, and I gained a stone or two of muscle, but that was based on iffy 
body fat percentage calculators, which accuracy, not necessarily the strongest point, but you get the idea. I don't look like the same person in either of those shots, besides the tramp stamp tattoo. <laughs> and then I applied this technique to other areas of my life. Froku, with the Afro-esque wig over there, to Goku. I slowly leveled up over time, improving various aspects of my cosplay. I did it with my business as well. Slow incremental changes. So, for fitness, it might be things as simple as eating more protein in your diet, um, lifting weights three times a week, going on walks when you don't. Really simple stuff that anyone can commit to. I currently only exercise for about four hours a week. Uh, any of you going to honestly tell me that you're too busy for four hours? By modeling a fictional character, even though it's so unbelievably cringe, I can't argue with the results it's brought me. I have my dream girlfriend still dressed like my son. Woo! <laughs> I was the first male from the UK to represent my country at the World Cosplay Summit. And with my career and financial goals, I earn more money than I ever thought I would. After failing every course, I somehow got into uni and I passed it over to one. I have a lot to thank for anime, for cosplay and for fitness. It's utterly changed my life and I know it can change yours too. My advice? If you already cosplay, you know what it's like to try and become fictional character and to try and embody what that character encompasses. So pick a character that inspires you and give your entire heart to that character just like I did for Goku. Unless they're evil. Unless they're evil <laughs> and then I'll have to fight you. <laughs> um, thank you very much.